At 11.42 p.m. last night, Sicily's power grid experienced its first unexplained failure in months. No storms, no equipment malfunction, just a sudden, synchronised blackout across three provinces surrounding Mount Etna. Emergency technicians rushed to diagnose the cause, never suspecting they were witnessing the opening move in a volcanic chess game that had already begun. Because beneath their feet the same seismic pattern that triggered a 417-day eruption cycle in 2008 is pulsing back to life. Not random volcanic noise. Systematic preparation. Like the mountain is methodically testing every weakness in Sicily's infrastructure before launching its next sustained assault. And this time the stakes are exponentially higher. In 2008, Etna's relentless eruption cycle collapsed roads destroyed cable systems and turned basic transportation into a daily gamble with molten rock. But Sicily's infrastructure was simpler then. Today, fibre optic cables carrying Europe's internet traffic snake around Etna's base. Refineries processing Mediterranean fuel supplies sit within range of pyroclastic flows. Airport navigation systems depend on towers that stand directly in historical lava paths. Scientists have confirmed the volcanic countdown has restarted. The question is no longer if Sicily's critical systems will fail, but whether modern Europe can survive 417 days of systematic volcanic sabotage, targeting the infrastructure that keeps an entire continent connected. On May 13th, 2008, the eruption of Mount Etna was accompanied by over 200 earthquakes and significant ground deformation in the summit area, immediately triggering emergency sessions at Italy's National Institute of Geophysics and Volcanology, INGV. Seismic data revealed four distinct earthquake layers beneath Etna, with shallow foci directly linked to flank instability. Dr. Marco Ferretto Carlino of INGV's Etna Observatory described the pattern as choreographed magma movement creating stomatomatic pressure transfers. The eruption persisted at a slowly diminishing rate for precisely 417 days until July 6, 2009, making it the longest flank eruption since the event from 1991 to 1993, which lasted 473 days. GPS stations recorded eastern flanks slipping up to two meters during the eruption, causing structural damage to houses perched on the volcano's slopes. Seismic monitors detected systematic patterns. Earthquake swarms occurred within shallow, intermediate and deep seismogenic volumes, corresponding to distinct magma ascent stages. Temperature sensors recorded thermal anomalies, reaching a blistering 1,200 degrees Celsius at active vents. Gas spectrometers measured sulfur dioxide emissions, spiking to 8,000 tonnes per day during peak activity. Strain release curves showed major steps both during and before eruptions, revealing a straightforward relationship between seismicity and volcanism. Multiple monitoring stations across Sicily recorded synchronised tremor signatures, extending well beyond the volcanic edifice itself. Complex fault networks responded to magmatic pressure, transferring stress across regional systems like instruments in some hidden geological orchestra. Dr. Alessandro Bonforte of INGV stated bluntly, the southeastern flank movement affects a much larger area than previously known. Professor Hydran Kopp of GEOMAR warned, the entire slope is in motion due to gravity. Most recently, 2025 research revealed B-value earthquake patterns that can predict eruptions months in advance. The signs are unmistakable. Mount Etna Towers, 3,400, three meters above Sicily's eastern coast, making it Europe's tallest active volcano south of the Alps. The volcanic behemoth covers 1,190 square kilometers with a 140 km basal circumference, positioned ominously above the convergent margin between the African and Eurasian plates. Thousands of years ago, the eastern flank experienced a catastrophic collapse that generated an enormous landslide, similar in scale to Mount St. Helens in 1980. 
Since 1600 AD, Etna has produced at least 60 flank eruptions and countless summit eruptions, with nearly half occurring since 1900 alone. Most eruptions occur at five distinct summit craters, the Northeast Crater, Voragin, Bokanova, and two sites in the Southeast Crater complex. Typical eruption cycles follow predictable patterns. They begin with Strombolian summit activity, then progressive fissure opening on the flanks and effusive lava flows that can last days to weeks. Flank eruptions can reach down to a few hundred meters altitude, putting inhabited villages terrifyingly close on older eruption cones. Normal eruptions provide some warning signs. Those include harmonic tremors, ground swelling measured by GPS, and increased gas emissions. But the May 13th, 2008 eruption immediately distinguished itself through unprecedented persistence and what appeared to be systematic infrastructure targeting. Unlike typical brief episodes, this eruption maintained consistent lava production for over 13 months straight. The pattern was eerily methodical. Weeks one to four saw initial fissure activity targeting main access routes. Months two to six brought lava flows that systematically severed backup infrastructure. Months seven to 12 unleashed persistent ash emissions that repeatedly grounded aviation. Months 13 to 14 delivered final pyroclastic surges before a sudden cessation. The 2008 event damaged critical tourist infrastructure, including Etna cable car arrival stations, but its systematic nature suggested something beyond normal volcanic behavior Roads required daily repairs. Power restoration became a routine emergency procedure. Communication systems failed in disturbingly predictable sequences. Historical context revealed this was not some anomaly. The eruption from 1991 to 1993 lasted 473 days with similar patterns of systematic destruction. The 2001 flank eruption occurred during peak tourist season and it was easily accessible to media coverage showing the volcano's capability for sustained industrial scale disruption. What made 2008 truly terrifying was its timing precision. Seismic strain release curves showed the volcano operating like a giant syst systematic pressure relief system rather than some chaotic geological event. The 417 day timeframe now looks less like chance and more like calculated strategy. Research in 2025 analyzing seismic patterns from 2005 to 2024 revealed that B-value earthquake signatures now match the exact conditions preceding the 2008 eruption. Scientists studying Mount Etna discovered a secret language in its earthquake patterns with specific ratios of small to large tremors indicating distinct magma ascent stages. Current seismic swarms are affecting shallow, intermediate and deep volumes beneath Etna in the same sequence that led to the 417 day eruption. GPS stations record accelerating southeastern flank movement. B value monitoring shows stress concentration patterns identical to 2008 pre-eruption signatures Thermal satellites detect temperature. Anomalies at previously dormant vents. Gas monitoring systems are registering sulfur dioxide spikes, reminiscent of long-term eruption preparation. Deep earthquake clusters reveal complex fault networks responding to renewed magmatic pressure. All the signs are converging. But Sicily's infrastructure landscape has fundamentally changed since 2008. Fiber optic cables now carry Europe's internet traffic through corridors that experienced systematic lava flow targeting during the last 417 day cycle. The Mediterranean's primary data cables connecting Europe, Africa and Asia now route directly beneath Etna's proven pyroclastic flow zones, placing critical communications infrastructure under risk. Catania Fontana Rossa Airport has expanded to serve 10 million passengers annually with automated navigation systems that rely on towers located in historical destruction paths. 10 million passengers now depend on equipment in vulnerable locations. 
recent minor eruptions have repeatedly forced airport closures, demonstrating the volcano's capability to disrupt modern aviation networks. Energy infrastructure presents exponential vulnerability. Sicily's renewable energy transition has scattered solar farms and wind installations across Etna's flanks. Geothermal plants now tap the same underground heat sources that fuel eruptions. Power substations serving mainland Italy route through zones where authorities previously used dynamite to redirect lava flows away from critical infrastructure. Mediterranean shipping depends on automated port systems in Catania and Augusta. Fuel refineries process supplies for southern Europe. LNG terminals handle natural gas distribution across the region. All of these facilities sit within the range of sustained pyroclastic activity demonstrated in past eruption cycles. The potential for regional economic disruption extends far beyond immediate losses to encompass long-term investments in disaster preparedness across multiple sectors. Tourism infrastructure supporting millions of annual visitors could face systematic destruction over 400 days. Agricultural systems face compound threats. Volcanic ash reduces crop yields while disrupting ecosystems, though paradoxically enriching soil for long-term fertility. Sicily's renowned wine industry, utterly dependent on volcanic soil, faces destruction from the same geological forces that created its advantage. Transportation networks show critical vulnerabilities. The Ferrovia Circumetnia Railway encircles the volcano in a 110-kilometer semicircle, creating potential isolation scenarios during sustained eruption cycles. Highway systems lack adequate redundancy for a 400-day disruption. Communication systems rely on towers positioned exactly where sustained volcanic activity proved capable of systematic destruction. Emergency response networks depend on infrastructure demonstrated to be vulnerable to methodical volcanic assault. The domino effect could be devastating. Istituto Nazionale di Geofisica e Vulcanologia, ING FIP, now operates continuous seismic monitoring across 19 miles of crust beneath Etna, tracking critical B B value changes in real time. The cutting edge GOCR underwater geodetic network monitors seafloor displacement along submerged volcanic flanks. Advanced satellite systems provide unprecedented thermal and deformation monitoring capability. The recent June 2nd, 2025 eruption validated the B Mufha. B value prediction method showing systematic volcanic preparation months before any surface activity. Current data suggests identical preparation patterns are active right now. Modern alert systems can track multiple parameters simultaneously, but infrastructure shutdowns require hours while volcanic escalation occurs in minutes. It is an arms race we may be losing. Dr. Marco Ferretto Carlino warns that B value B-value monitoring offers a powerful way to track magma movement and assess the volcano's evolving state before eruptions. Mounting research indicates these volcanic systems operate as a laboratory, revealing systematic patterns rather than purely chaotic geological events. Scientists confirm that Etna's volcanic fault networks create multi-layered deformation patterns controlled by inherited faults and magmatic feeding system pressure. Expert consensus indicates 417 day cycles represent systematic volcanic behavior, not anomalous flukes. Yet nearly one third of Sicily's population lives on Etna's volcanic slopes. The June 2025 eruption produced ash plumes 6.5 kilometers high Current evacuation plans still assume brief eruption scenarios, not more than 400 days of infrastructure warfare. Emergency response systems lack redundancy for sustained volcanic siege scenarios. Previous eruptions required dynamite, intervention to protect critical infrastructure, indicating defensive measures woefully inadequate for relentless volcanic assault. If Etna's systematic 417-day destruction cycle has truly restarted, 
Are we witnessing a volcano preparing to wage war against the digital infrastructure keeping modern Europe connected? When the earthquake patterns say months, but evacuation plans assume hours, who wins? Systematic volcanic persistence or human technological dependence? Subscribe to Earth Attacks to decode the hidden rhythms threatening our interconnected world. Sometimes volcanoes do not just erupt. Sometimes they strategize.